Suppose I have an alternating series like this one. This is the sum from i equal to 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the i minus 1 times some other positive decreasing sequence with limit 0 b sub i. Now, in my first video on alternating series, we saw that if I put down the number line, there was this sort of back and forth behavior where the S1 was going to go all the way out, and then the S2 was going to go back in, and then the S3 was going to go out, and S4 back in, and S5 out, and S6, and S7, and it just could back and forth and back and forth like that. And then we concluded that the actual sum of the series was going to converge in this kind of case, and it was somewhere in the middle squash between this alternating behavior. Now. Let me suppose I've done that, and I want to go and try to estimate this by perhaps only these first seven terms. That is, I have this series, and I want to go and write it as the sum of a partial sum, S7, and some remainder, some error term, R7. Now, I don't know where exactly this sum is. It could be anywhere in this particular region. But let me try to approximate it by, say, the S7. So the question is, how good is this error? If I take this R7, is it a small number? Is it a big number? How can I control how bad my estimate of only taking the first seven terms is going to be? Now, to think about what this remainder could be, we're currently at the S7, and imagine we wanted to go from the S7 out to an S8. Well, after we went out to the S8, we would then come back to an S9 and go out to an S10 and so on, but Based on the way that this collapsing works is the furthest I can ever get away from S7 and the entire rest of the series is going to go to S8 because after that I'm going to get closer and closer and closer. That's the way this alternating series works. So whatever the remainder is, I can definitely say that that R7 is going to be less than the distance between S8 and S7. That is between the one term and the next one. And indeed, the difference between S7 and S8 is just whether I've added the 8th term on, as in this is just that B8. So in other words, my R7, my remainder when I take 7 terms, is just bounded by whatever the 8th term is. And in general, if I replace 7 here with N, I can say that my remainder of N terms is just going to be whatever the N plus 1th term was. So Let's see how this works out in a specific example. So I've got minus 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n cubed here. And then I'm going to say that for my application, I'm interested in an accuracy of 0.001. Now, how can I ensure that I have enough terms to get that accuracy? Well, if I look at what my remainder is going to be, if I want to estimate what Rn was, what we've just seen is that I can bound that by the n plus 1 term. What I want this n plus 1 term to be, and it is just remember 1 over n plus 1 cubed, I want that to be less than this 0 0.001. So now I have this relationship here that the 1 over n plus 1 cubed needs to be less than 1 over 1,000, which is another way of saying 0 0.001. Okay, this is an inequality, so I can just multiply it up. That's 1,000 is less than n plus 1 cubed. I can take the cube root of both sides. I can get 10 is less than n plus 1. And finally, I can say that n is less than or equal to n. So what does this tell me? It tells me that as long as I take n as 9 or bigger, then that ensures that whatever approximation I write out, my ninth partial sum, then that ninth partial sum will be accurate to within 0 0.001. Now the final point to make here is that in whatever application you may actually be doing in your future careers, whether it's some engineering application or otherwise, there's going to be an uncertainty that comes from that different discipline. And the idea here is this, is it doesn't matter what the uncertainty is to calculus. If you come in with the restriction, you need it to be however certain you want, you can use this to figure out how many terms you need to get that desired level of certainty. Going back to wolframalpha.com, let's go and try to compute out a few things. I'm going to take the sum of the particular series, which was the minus 1 to the power of n minus 1, and then all divided by n cubed. And what we want to do is take the approximation from 1 to 9, because 9 told us how many terms we we're going to need. So I do that computation, and what do I get? It looks like a value of 0 0.902. This is only taking nine terms, and what we've guaranteed is that we are within 0 0.001 of the correct answer. If I took the 
as many terms as I could possibly want. And indeed, let me just try just for fun here. How about instead of one to nine, I just put in a thousand terms. So this is going to be a huge number of terms. It's going to take a little while for it to compute. And there it goes. So it says that if I'm going to take a thousand terms, it's 0 0.9015, which is Yes, not the exact same as the 0.902 we've seen before, but it was within 0.001 of it. Indeed, we could carry on and add more and more terms and we'd get more and more accurate, but I don't need any more than 9 for this specific level of certainty.